Yo. What up? Yo. What up? Yo. Welcome. Hey. Welcome to episode nine of Gotta Watch Them All. This is your host, Ken Pescator. And I am joined by my one piece pajama Pikachu Kigurumi wearing wife, Melissa. Hi. Hey. You're looking comfy. <laughs> I am so comfy. These are this was the best investment ever. It has a butt flap. Yes. It is the, when you're wearing a one piece pajama suit such as this, <laughs> the butt flap is necessary for, you know, quick access. You gotta go. <laughs> Because I've had the other ones where it's just the front zipper and then had to go, and it's brutal for two reasons. One, in the middle of the night when it's really cold, you have to get literally completely <laughs> naked to, in order to use the bathroom. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the worst part about it. Yeah, there's there's nothing worse than that, actually. So, But this this guy is really good. And he's got the hood and he's got the ears. I actually like it because it, it has a cool uh, Pokeball embroidery in the front it's really cool yeah and the sleeves have the little thumb holes in oh it. you love that i do it's and it, it it's really it really is comfy and warm not me there's a charmander one i should get that one you should get the you should there's a you would one. look hilarious in that josh would love that i need that. a snorlax one <laughs> if they had a snorlax one i it would already be on i guess you're right i guess you're right all right so we are on the eve pretty much, of a big Pokemon Go update that is coming on the uh, Monday the 12th. This episode will be out before that. Uh, but Niantic has officially announced they've actually been pretty good with communicating over the past week because they, they made some server-side updates uh, to the tracker. Then there was an actual hard update. A lot in the game has changed over the past couple days. They went back to not storing sprite information on the phone, so now it's on the server-side. They went to uh, the nearby tracker system is kind of this hybrid thing where now it, it's a little bit more balanced. If you're not by a Pokestop, you, you could see sightings and nearby. So they've changed that up a little bit, which I still don't understand because it, it, it fluctuates so much. I don't even know how it works. I don't know if you Yeah, I that. really haven't really messed with it, so... I don't know. It's it's They, they got to figure out some, one style and stick to it. I don't know what's going on with that tracker, but... Um, apparently, on Monday, they're going to be giving us information about Gen 2 or some kind of new Pokemon. They're not using Gen 2 as the language. They just said new Pokemon will be coming to, to Pokemon Go, and the information is coming on the 12th. Stay tuned. So I'm yes. very happy. I'm excited, too. Yay. It's about time. I know, no, no. We, we, need, we need new Pokemon. I, I'm, I do not have a complete Pokedex right now, American Pokedex, North American. I am too shy, and I, am, I have an Amistar waiting to be evolved. So, or and an what's the other one? Omni- 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 Dragonite. Dragonite and Aerodactyl. So I'll be too short. Mm. But um, I'm ready for new Pokemon just to get out there and play again. And it's going to be good because this is with winter. It'll, you know, still motivate people to play. And, you know, in Jersey, it is freezing out right now. Oh, my now. God. Yeah, it is so it's, ridiculously cold. It's, it's in un- the 20s right now. I, I can't even handle it going out. It's really... See, but we're yuck. fortunate because we have a, we've got a couple locations that have close proximity Pokestops that we can park the car and stay in the heat with heat, yeah, heated ta- seats. Yeah, we've talked yep. about our runs through Red Bank. And- but Belmar, Belmar is another spot that's big in, in Jersey here at Jersey Shore. And uh, there's three three very active Pokestops that are all next to each other, all lumped in. And if you if you get the right parking spot, you can, you can hit all three, all three stops without leaving without, the car. Yeah. It's the greatest. But um, I'll double park for that spot because people just line up and play and they don't want to get out of their car because it's freezing. But they also made the announcement of a Pokemon Go official uh, partnership program. Uh, They made an announcement on, you know, we we knew about this Starbucks leak that was supposed to happen, uh, which ended up happening. But Sprint jumped in and actually got the, 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 the verbiage of first sponsor uh, because they actually made their announcement the day before the Starbucks thing went live. So we have official Starbucks Pokestops now and sponsored official Sprint Pokestops and gyms yeah. coming, uh, which is interesting. But malls are going to be more active. I know. Now. That'll be good for indoor traffic. That's that's another good thing for, for winter. But, um, you know, we saw with the Starbucks leak that was, you know, was all over Reddit that 
they were tr- trying to train the employees of like what to expect and and what the language that the you know the gamers would use and you know these poker stops were supposed to be lured up the whole time. We went out on the launch day of this event to our local Starbucks. No yeah. lure. Yeah, no lure. And they were supposed to be having this promotional Pokemon drink. Right, right. So it's a, they just called it the Pokemon Go Frappuccino, but apparently it's a vanilla bean Frappuccino with raspberry and blackberry syrups. I don't, I don't know if it yeah. was, it was, I don't know if it was a syrup, but it was. Syrup. It was disgusting. <laughs> it was disgusting. Like, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't do berry stuff anyway, so I didn't even go for it, but. Melissa I'm all about it. fruit drinks. I'm all about smoothies. Uh, frappuccino <laughs> thing with whipped cream on it. Totally up my alley. Looked cute. Tasted. It tasted disgusting. <laughs> and You're the, like the only person on earth. No, 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 no. Everyone loves it. What? Everyone Who's loves everybody? it. Everybody because the they're, interwebs. They're, there's something wrong with them. There's something wrong with them. It was like drinking beets. It was like drinking <laughs> mini marbles. Like hundreds of them, and they were. She so said hard. it was so seedy, like from the the berries, that it was like almost undrinkable. It was, it was undrinkable. So I didn't hear anyone complain about seeds. But you know what? It, it's one thing to have seeds and then be able to like crunch them and like swallow them down. <laughs> there was ones that were so hard, literally. I just wanted to spit it out. See, but our you know our barista didn't know about it initially and had to go back and get the paper to make the thing with the with the recipe. So. There's a good chance she made it wrong. It looked like the right color. It looked yeah. Like... It looked it looked right. It looked like it could have been a Pokemon drink. But, but I don't know. We we had to stop in so we could at least support you know and and do go through the motions. But yeah, you didn't. Like we tried it. it. <laughs> it was a fail. Josh got opinion. a strawberry banana smoothie. He was happy anyway. Yeah, they should have made they should have made the strawberry banana smoothie uh, a Pokemon smoothie. Honestly. I don't know, but it, it's cool. The Pokestops have the image of that drink, you know, is what you spin, and, and it actually says sponsored in the top corner. So, you know, it, it makes no, uh, you know, they're not trying to hide the fact that this is a pay-to-play, you know, sp- sponsored place, Yeah, which is fine. You know, Sprint is supposed to be coming too. I don't know what their image is going to be. Maybe it'll be the, uh, can you hear me now guy with the oh. yellow shirt, Team Instinct. Oh my goodness. Oh, that'd be funny if they that, do a Team Instinct thing because Sprint's yellow. That would be Whoa, funny. That logo. They're not that clever. We'll see. Sprint or Team we'll Instinct? <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry, we, I, I, no, I don't know. It, we haven't really talked about this in a while. I'm Team Valor and Melissa is Mystic, so the house is divided. Yes. The, the, game, the game of rivalry. Thrones is on with yes. the local gyms because but our son it, is also Mystic, so... Yes. When it comes to, to fighting gyms, like sometimes I just have to keep my mouth shut because it's two to one. So it's like there's so many mystic gyms. And then I leave for work like at five o'clock in the morning and I'll go sit in front of a gym and take I it down. Th- well, when else am I going to go? I can't do it when you guys are awake because you get mad. That is so funny. I'm over at the at the gym I right then. I'm can. there. I'm there right now. So, <laughs> see, I got to go. I have to go stealth. I have to go stealth that to the gym. That is gyms. so funny. All right, so big announcement coming. So the next time we we talk on the podcast, we'll hopefully be talking about some some new Pokemon. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this episode. All right, the episode. So originally airing on September 18th, 1998. The the title of the episode is "The School of Hard Knocks," and interesting episode. You initially had said we we've watched it four times. <laughs> we've watched yeah. the episode four times. You originally had said. That the episode was light on content and not a lot went down. I'm looking at your notebook and you have four note four pages yes, of I notes. Did. So the, obviously something had to happen. But uh, right away with this episode, I noticed this, and you didn't. You, you've said that you didn't really feel this way, but the the animation looked very different to me. It looked very very different. It's still Team Ota. You know, it's still the same animation team as the previous episodes, but. It's a lot more stylized in this episode. There's a lot more, you know, very, very, you know, traditional anime style stuff going on. I don't know. I noticed that throughout the whole episode. I don't know why you didn't notice it, but... Well, I mean... You cray. Yeah, I don't know. No, but I I, I noticed that a lot, but... the Very, very interesting episode technically and, you know, plot-wise. So the episode starts. 
with Misty and Ash just kind of butting heads and going at it, and they're still fighting over the bike. Misty is, of course, in the right, and yeah. Ash is still being, you know, in, in denial. All right, I want to talk about Ash real quick. And we didn't talk about this before we recorded. We hate Ash. We've been hating on Ash. I need to turn. I want to turn this around. I love Ash. No, no. I we I love him too. But we've been hating on him heavy. When I was editing last week's episode, right? <laughs> I'm like three quarters of the way through, and I'm like, we have been we were slamming him. him the whole episode. But he uh, deserves look, it. Look, look. Well, we're turning it around. Ash is is the man. All right. Okay. Let's do this. Let's stay. Let's stay positive for Ash. He deserves it. All right. <laughs> okay. He, he, come on. Let's just go positive for Ash. All right. All right. Cool. So the episode starts out with him and Misty beefing over the bike. He's in denial. He's in the wrong. But for the sake of of positivity, we're gonna we're gonna move on. Right. <laughs> he's not he's not a jerk at all. And then Brock jumps in and he's like. You know, I'm tired of you guys arguing. If you did less arguing, we'd be at Vermilion City by now. We're taking too long here. We have to start the show. They break the fourth wall. They do. They break the fourth and so wall. Does Pika. He, so does Pikachu. Like, look at the camera. Oh, I mean, Brock's eyes are squinted, but he's looking <laughs> at the camera and, you know, straight up breaks the fourth wall, which I thought was really cool. And they cut to the title card, uh, The School of Hard Knocks. So it was very interesting to see that happen. Um, but you love this next part. Oh, yeah. It was so great. So the episode immediately starts with um, Brock, like straight up Mary Poppins style, pulling an entire picnic out of his book bag, complete with official Pokemon tea set. and No, but like the table and chairs and everything, yeah. like tablecloth. You yeah, know, chair, flowers. Vase. <laughs> like he pull, he pulls out this special uh, Pokemon coffee. He's like, "You guys are too young for this. Here, have some prune juice." Yeah, and then Misty's like, "No, how about some herbal tea?" And yeah. Ash is like, "Are you kidding me? Like, what is going on?" You know, he. I guess he. Yeah, and know. Brock was prepared because he's like, "Well, that's perfect because I have this special." And I, even though we watch it four times, I still don't know where the water came from, what mountain it came from. I don't know, but he pulls, he pulls out, out this super good water. Yeah, and is ready to like whip up this excellent snack for them because their journey is just taking too long. And then, well, that, no, just to make everyone feel better for the, for, so they would stop arguing. Oh, true. And he's true, like, true, and true. he goes, and I'll whip up some, some crepes from France, straight from France. Now, this is interesting too, because this is the first time they actually mention a real world place. They mention France. Yes. And at the second he talks about France and crepes, Misty goes like, completely dream sequence like yeah. oh my god France. she's like France and she starts getting all like romantical well she's like <laughs> she's like it's so romantic I love it and, and she starts daydreaming and then Ash ruins it by chomping on some food so Misty gets totally angry and starts bashing him on the head with she hits him with like a log <laughs> she, so the, the animation they cut to it is like she's holding like this like four inch wide log that she clobbers yeah, him on the head great daydream about her being all pretty in some French clothing and sitting there and drinking she's her like tea. In a, they, yeah she's in like a, a street side a, a sidewalk cafe yeah, you know cafe. sipping on the yeah. tea uh, but Brock charges back at them now he's now they show him with like a bowl and a whisk like he's ready to go and he's like I he's cannot mixing. make these crepes without fire or tea yeah. Uh, yeah I can't do this stuff without fire and you know, it's up to them, meaning Misty and Ash, to figure out how to get some firewood. And good old Misty straight up volunteers Ash. She's like, uh, you know, well, I volunteer to stay here behind with you, Brock, and keep you company. So Ash is on Beat Street, and he gets stuck looking for the firewood. Now, they cut to him walking in the in the forest, and he's like, firewood, where are you? Fire? Like, like yeah. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. Like, so, you know. That, yeah, but, but that's so Ash, but because, like, That's, he like, totally the little kid not, moment. Like, yeah, our exactly. son would love that scene. Like, he would crack up over that. Yeah. Uh, it, just really, really, really funny. That's cute, yeah. And as he's walking, he sees like this smoke in the distance, and he's like, "What? What is that? Is that a and fire?" A light. Yeah. And a light, yeah. And he goes, "And but it's actually this really, really thick, dense fog uh, that's just kind of like rolling in, and he has no idea like what the heck is going on and how he actually got there." Um, and he stumbles upon a group of well dressed young men with very, in a you know, they're in a circle, they're holding candles. Yeah, there's a treadmill. 
in the yeah. middle of this foggy, you know, field. And there's a young boy, a young kid, again, wearing a suit. They all look dapper, like very school ties. Yes. And they have this kid running on a treadmill. They're all holding candles like a cult. And they're <laughs> drilling him about Pokemon trivia, yeah, like questions like, like totally... what's, what's you know, who, who's this Pokemon? And showing him photos. And the kid's running on the treadmill. He's, he's sweating. sweating. And he's trying to answer the questions as best he can. And it's this really bizarre scene because they have candles. You're like, what, what are they doing yeah, with the candles? Like, and why like, is there a treadmill it, in the middle of a field? Yeah, and what is it plugged happening? into? Yeah. What is happening? <laughs> and Ash obviously feels exactly the same way because they show him charge in after... Uh, this kid really is just getting, you know, hazed from what appears to be, you know, upperclassmen at the school. Mates. You know, yeah. now and these these school people, they're they're wearing suits. They're they're young kids, but they're very anime stylized. Like they have different color hair. Mm-hmm. You know, some of them have like the very traditional like bowl cut. Some of them have you know the Yu Gi Oh style yes, flair. They are very stylized. Totally stylized. Ash comes over and he's like, hey, you know, leave this kid alone. What are you guys doing? Yeah, well, he thinks he's getting bullied, so Ash has to step in and try to save the day. You see, because why? Because Ash has a good heart, see? He's a good heart, yes. And as he runs over, these other kids are like, you know, who are you? What are you doing? You know, don't interfere with us. This is our type of training. And they pretty much come out and say that they don't want losers in their school that don't know, you know, in this case, they were drilling him on, you know, what's... The, the advanced stage yeah. of Pidgey, uh, and, and you know he didn't know he fell off the treadmill. He's like, "There's a loser. We don't want this." And Ash defends the kid, and he's like, "Look, if your if your school is going to turn out students like you, you know that that's not something I would want. You know, want to be a part of." Misty shows up and gets Ash's back. It's pretty cool, um, you know, and she kind of steps in. But then and says like, "Yeah, Ash, you, you know, tell them pretty much like they they shouldn't be like that." But. <laughs> but Ash, you know, I, I have select words, but I'm going to keep them to myself. Being the kid that he is, decides to say no, stay out of it. And then I love this part. I love I love Misty so much. So Ash says no, stay out of it. And then Misty says, okay, no problem. It's very brave of you for you to take on all five of them. Ash, the, the look on Ash's face is great because he immediately like, well, he realizes now that, you know, he's got to put his money where his mouth is, and he's he is standing up to these five kids that, you know, are holding candles in a foggy field. You know, this is pretty, this is pretty yeah, intense. Yeah, pretty intense. And then she, then she puts the icing on the cake, and she says, uh, it's okay. I'll stay on the sidelines and cheer you on and uh, be ready to drag your carcass away. Now, and this is with some really heavy animation during this part, too. So they really, like... Play it up that the the snarkiness of Misty here, it's awesome. Yeah, it's like so she's funny. standing on the side and she's just got this great little happy attitude. I love it. I love it. It's great. It's really, really funny. And it comes out that these students uh, aren't fighters. Yeah, they and didn't they, want to fight. And they're very, very cocky. They're very pompous and condescending. And they pretty much walk away, you know... Yeah, pretty much telling um, Ash the head he's not worthy enough of their fighting. That and well, uh, Ash is like, you're just scared. You you can't beat me. And, and they're like, no, 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 no. We're, we, we're, we're scared we're of how bad we're going to beat you. <laughs> yeah, and, so they they're beefing. So yeah. they're they're going back and forth. It, yes. It's really funny, and they kind of just like disappear. And then Brock shows up. This is great. This now, is great. Out of nowhere. So when Brock was Mary Poppinsing this whole picnic scene. And he's, you know, they show him with a bowl and a whisk because he wants to make these crepes. This is a recurring thing that will we'll carry through this episode. So Brock shows up, you know, at the treadmill where they were, you know, Ash was looking for the firewood. And he's got the whisk and bowl in hand and he's whisking away the whole time. Yeah, and it's, he's, it's awesome. like literally out of nowhere. He shows up out of nowhere mixing the bowl and says... Oh, those are the tech students. Like, he was there the entire time. Like, bro, where were you? So he, he <laughs> says, like, these are the, oh, the, the infamous, uh, mysterious or whatever Pokemon tech students. And, you know, Ash is very intrigued. Pokemon tech, what do you mean? And Misty, you now this is, again, one of those things you just got to suspend your understanding of, you know, coincidental things that are going to happen in, so in a kid's happens. cartoon. Yeah. She goes, oh, yeah, Pokemon Tech. I'm, I'm pretty sure it stands for Pokemon Technical. It's a school. I think I have a flyer for it in my pocket. And, and lo boom, and behold. she pulls out a flyer for the school. Love it's it. hilarious. Love it. 
and hands it over to Brock. And Brock starts reading off that this is a super high-end school. Um, it's very prestigious. It's a way of Pokemon trainers entering the Pokemon League without battling. They don't have to go around and battle gyms and collect badges to gain entry into the league. They can actually just graduate from this program and it's an automatic entry into the Pokemon League. And Ash is not going for it. Yeah, Ash is like, you know, this is ridiculous. He calls it out and he just like can't understand like how this could possibly even be a thing. Um, And, you know, Misty comes, comes off and says like, oh, this is like a school for millionaires and only rich, you know, rich, rich kids can kids, go into yeah. it. And again, it and fires Ash up. Ash is just bitter. It's all He's fired up. Bitter. It's so funny. It's so funny. But the the whole time that this is great, the whole time that they're talking about the school, Pikachu is off in the distance. Yes. Not even no, no, off in the distance. He's right there in front of them and he's checking out the treadmill. And Brock's standing there, and he's reading the flyer, and Pikachu starts messing with the buttons on the treadmill, and the treadmill starts going. Pikachu falls on the moving treadmill, and now is stuck running with the treadmill, and he starts sweating, and he's trying to get their attention, and they don't realize They don't realize it, and Brock leans over and puts his hand on the machine, like on the speed up button. And it starts going faster and faster, and Pikachu totally wipes out, eats it. It's like such a cute little thing that's happening. It's happening happening at the same time as Brock is reading off the the, the flyer, yeah, so it's just it's, it's like really a little cool. filler, like for a, something a scene that may have been kind of boring. Just explaining that it's just a cute little filler that they added to it. So Ash is all mad. He's like, I need to know where this school is. And this young the, the kid who was the getting bullied, who's we find a, his name is Joe. He's still there through this whole exchange. And and Ash goes, you know, where is this school? And Joe just points and he goes, it's, it's right there. And you hear this intercom come on like a school speaker that says like, you know, uh, advanced battling in fog or fog battle tactics class is over. And immediately all the fog, the fog clears dissipates. and they're standing right in the courtyard of the school. It's like the great. school is literally like right, right there. there. And it's not just like a tiny school. It's like a college campus. Yeah, and they're standing look, yeah, in the exactly. Middle of it. it looks like a college campus. Uh, and then Joe, you know, kind of starts t- telling the story of what this school is all about and how it works, and he explains this hierarchy, which is very, very intriguing to Ash. So there's a beginner class. That's the class that Joe is in, and you know, his beginner class is like the equivalent of one and two badges, having two badges. Yeah, like you know, so that's how it equates. And then there's a middle, a middle school which is like four badges and then there's the upper high school that's six badges and then when you graduate it's like you know you gain you gain entry and these are all young kids you know but they they show off in the distance there's like a little hill and they show this older older gentleman older student they say look it's not just kids here you know look at that guy he's an upperclassman you know he's been here a long time the classes are so hard they won't let people advance unless they you know can do it yeah and the people and then the best is he goes you know people won't go home unless they actually graduate and the guys over there on the hill all swirly he's like swirly eyed all by himself the poor old man rough on his beard and he he looks like he's all he's stressed out because he can't get out of the beginner's class with like the 10 year olds yeah and the kid says you know and I um I pretend like I don't know as much as I do so that the other kids will help me because if not I'm going to end up like that guy. Right, right. Which is great. Ash immediately says, you know, this is ridiculous. This is a violation, you know. Uh, oh, and Misty even says, and I like how they kind of threw this in. This was like a like a soft little bullying thing, but uh it, you know Misty's like, "Well, what do the teachers think about this?" And Joe is like, well, they don't know about it. You know, mm-hmm. they, they, they don't know about this secret form of training, yeah. which is like, you know, this hazing that they're doing out, you know, while under the cover of fog. But he also says, and if they do know about it, they don't say anything. Right. I thought that that was just like, you know, a little, you yeah. know, a little, little, little jab at bullying, which was interesting. Ash is mad. He's demanding. He's like, I need to know who's in charge, who is doing these, these terrible training yeah, practices. He's, he's not having it. He's not having it at all. And Joe goes, oh, I have a picture right here. And pulls out this picture. And it's a female student. And immediately, Ash and Brock are completely head over heels, like, dreamy, you know, looking at this picture like, oh, my gosh. Now, you know? what's great? what's great about this scene is... Ash immediately says, 
about, like, is angry and is talking about how, you know, I want to talk to the person in charge. No one has the right to do this. Right. And then they show the picture. Brock and Ash get completely googly-eyed, and then Brock goes... She can violate my rights anytime. It completely so sets good. Misty off. Misty's like, says to Joe, like, if she's so mean to you, why do you keep a photo of her? And this is hilarious. It's such like a little kid thing. He goes, she is mean, but I really like the way she looks. And Ash jumps right in and totally is a savage to Misty and is like, yeah, man, unlike some other girls that aren't pretty and they're mean to you. Yeah, and and (laughs) Misty loses it and she completely the animation is awesome yeah her mouth gets so big and her head gets so big she's like that's it I'm going to find out who's boss you know who's in charge here and, and they, she, she turns storms around in. and straight up Godzilla stomps into the school to show everyone who's boss and they walk into the school and it's like a computer lab There's and it almost looks like an arcade so there's all these like, you know, almost looks like consoles, but almost looks like an old school, like, mainframe room or something. Um, and they pan out all of a sudden, and you see Team Rocket kind of peering in. Mm-hmm. Um, and it they start to talk about how Team Rocket was actually students at Pokemon Tech. Yeah, and on their final test, they totally blew they it. Bombed, they bombed their, their test. They get all sad, and it's a really cute little exchange. Um, and Meowth... Is like, look, you know, you got to look on the bright side, and and Team Rocket goes, "What do you mean? What's the bright side?" He goes, "You are at the bottom, top of the bottom." Yeah, and, and they, they, they start go, loving they, they start on loving me on me. Like, oh, now it's like, what is going on like here? I like, oh, I like you when you're nasty, or you like whatever it was. Uh, but it, it was a really funny exchange. Um, and they cut back into the school. Misty is fired up. She's in Joe's face, and is like, "Look, you know, I'm I'm here to defend the Cerulean City. Like, I'm coming at you." And Joe goes. Cerulean oh, City, you know. Oh, I know that you're water type Pokemon. I beat you in the simulator all the time. Yeah, Misty gets mad defensive over that, and was well, like, all these all these machines are video game simulators that actually look like the battle scene in the 3DS games, you know, which I thought was great. Obviously, mm-hmm. in you know Red and Blue back in the day, the format hasn't changed much, but it, it shows that, and you see him playing a weeping bell and fighting against the Starmie in this simulator and weeping bell just you know one hit KO is the Starmie. Yeah, and he even goes he goes every time I do the simulator I always beat um water type with my weeping bell and Misty turns around and is like, "Yeah, well that's just a computer. That's totally different than in real life. So let's battle." Now, now Ash totally doesn't get why they're battling. Like, he's like... He's like, what is going on yeah, what's here? what's happening? Why are you guys battling? So Missy has to turn around and explain to him that she's got to defend her her gym, yo. Respect. She needs... Respect. She needs that respect. See, now this... Starting around this time, it's very clear that the animation is different. I, I, I'm yes. telling you. They, they, when, so as soon as Misty gets into this battle and she, you know, calls out Starmie, the animation... It it is like on another level from it's what we've seen. Agreed. Okay, I I agree with you on that point. Only in, when they start battling, they're bad. Like when they throw out Pokeballs, when they throw out the Pokeballs, it looks awesome. amazing. Yeah, really you know, fun. Misty's like, I I choose you, start me. You know, it's like well, this whole to cool see their thing. Battle throws. Yeah, like, you get to see the whole throw. It's super super awesome. It's and very theatrical. Right, and Joe plays you know Weeping Bell. So now. This is just like the simulated battle that, you know, Weeping Bell just dominated Starmie. Everyone knows that the Grass-type Pokemon is going to have the advantage on the Water-type Pokemon, but... Not in this case. Not in this case, and Misty is charged up. She's yeah. She's fired up, and, you know, this is an interesting point, too, because she, she pretty much just tells Starmie, go. She's like, Starmie, go! And, you know, it uses Water Gun... And this water gun absolutely obliterates Weeping Bell and, like, blasts Weeping Bell away. And And Joe is completely confused and doesn't understand why he lost. Well, he's he's so stuck on the type advantage, he can't get by, you know, how that there's there's more to it, you know, besides just type advantage. And we come to learn that, like, this school and the training process at this school is very calculated and very formulaic yeah. um, and Text it's all about book. the numbers and it, it's really neat too and I guess they're doing this again to 
make this tied to the to the video games back in the day, but they they actually start talking in canon. They talk about levels and how you know even though the Pokemon are alive, there's still a level associated with them. So they they're kind of pairing in the stuff that's going on in the in the video game yeah. to the show, which I thought is cool. But the, you know they start talking about levels, and so he he just can't get it. He doesn't understand how this could have happened. And then you know finally from you so know, well while he's sitting there in his disappointment, in comes Giselle. Giselle. So Giselle is the 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 trainer that was in the photo that Ash and Brock you know went over he head over heels with. And she completely starts digging into Joe for losing the battle because Joe's sitting there all upset saying, you know, I don't understand in the simulation my, my, what is it, a weeping bell? Or weeping bell. Weeping bell would always win and Giselle Bo. comes. Bo. <laughs> and Giselle comes out of, you know, out of the background and says, don't you know anything? Is There's more to it than just... She calls him an embarrassment to the whole school. She's being like really rough. Oh, she's nasty. Now, th- yeah, but this poor kid, he's getting hazed. Like this, this is some serious school tie stuff going on. Yeah, it is. Where you know the the hazing is is real. Like, and and poor little Joe is you know taking it. taking the brunt okay, of it. He's getting it from all angles. Now, at the same time, Ash and Brock are totally getting their first look at Giselle, and they are straight up. Googly eyes, like googly drooling eyes. over them, and Ash makes the comment, "She looks like a movie star." Now, the animation while this is happening is Giselle with her hair all flowing and glistening and glowing, and Misty starts getting completely furious. I don't know how old she is, so I can't comment. All right, but Misty winds <laughs> up saying under her breath, "You know, like I'm gonna make them see stars because she's totally getting jelly." But um, Giselle turns around and goes into this really great intro of herself. And she goes, beauty, talent, humble attitude. Yeah, humble attitude. People call me a star, but I'm just Giselle. Misty now (laughs) totally over it and calls her out. Beauty is only skin deep or something like that. Yeah, well, she's like, you remind me of the saying, beauty is only skin deep. And again, Giselle is so cocky. I think they actually remember they cut back to Team Rocket peering in. Oh, it's like, yeah. and it's like I think she's even more cocky than we yeah, are. Yeah, because she had her own little motto too. So as this is happening with Team Rocket, James is gaga too. He's like, well, she is really cute. Yeah. Meowth comes in and says, well, not as cute as me. And they go into this great karate chop yeah, sequence. They just start. They just start beating up on Meowth. They're like, get out of here, leave, leave us alone. <laughs> they chop on on Meowth. Meowth actually blasts off at the speed of light with the whole little star and everything. Meowth yeah, is like, gone. Ding. ding. So he's gone. Cut back into the school again. It's just like yeah, they throw Miss, in they throw Misty, in these little Team Rocket teases. Yeah. It's and now really Misty funny. and Giselle are totally. They're going at They're it. They're going at it. And, uh, and Misty just, wants the battle. She challenges. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, as they're beat. No, this is great. This is this is so good. Misty and, and Giselle are going at it. And Ash, being the sweetheart, is like, oh, my God, I got to do something. Oh, yeah. And Brock leans over to Ash, kind of like, you know, whispering. is like, a wise Pokemon trainer said, yeah. one said, don't get involved in cat fights. Yeah. And, and, you know, Ash has this, like, confused look, but it just cuts back. It's... So funny, just like underhanded, you know, humor. Uh, really, really funny. Yeah, and then it instantly cuts into the battle. The battle. And, you know, Giselle knows that, that Misty has the Starmie. So she's like, you know, all right, well, for your Starmie, I'll play Graveler. And her throw is really cool. So her, her whole wind up, really cool. she does like this backhand toss. It looks really, really well, neat. She stretches her arm out real far and she brings her knee. It's, it's really cute. It's and really her background cool. is like very... Cute and celestial, and like it's awesome. It's cool. So she plays Graveler. Now I love Graveler because I'm a Geodude guy. And as soon as Graveler comes onto the field, Brock says, "Well, wait a second. Why is she going to use you know a ground type Pokemon against a water type Pokemon?" And you know it's becoming clear now that there's more to this whole type thing with the battle with Joe, you know, and all this. It should have won with a with a grass type Pokemon. You know, there's more to it here. And, you know, Misty thinks she's going to have the upper hand and immediately, you know, just lays the water gun out and Graveler... Graveler deflects it. He, he's rolled up in a ball flying towards 
towards the Starmie. Yeah, and barrels right through Right the through attack. the storm, right through the water gun. It is awesome. And smashes Starmie so hard that Starmie, Starmie breaks through the window the and into the yeah. pool outside. It's it's and lands in the in the and pool. lands in the water and Misty is shell shocked. She's just like, what just yeah, happened? Yeah, so they all run outside and they're retrieving Misty's Pokemon, and Giselle winds up saying, you know, it's the reason why my Pokemon won is because it's not just about your type; it's about the level and yeah. Well, my Pokemon is a, is a high enough level that it can withstand, you know. Uh, the, the super effective attacks. Yeah, and then much. she starts pretty much going, waxing all of these Pokemon facts and yeah. all these Pokemon calculations. But like numbers and calculations, like very calculated, again, very formulaic, like n- n- not in the realm of anything Ash, Brock, and Misty have ever discussed in relation to and she's Pokemon. She's so cocky about it, too. Like, like don't Well, she's you the top know? trainer like, in the beginner class. It's like, she's just, but the thing is, she's just book smart. She's, she's smart. She's not from. She's not from the streets. She don't got the streets. Street she's smarts. not like Misty and Ash. Exactly. Not, all right. Well, you know, Misty and oh, well, Ash seems like he he's got a pretty pretty solid home life. Yeah. You know? <laughs> True story. <laughs> not from the hood. But, <laughs> but Cerulean City. Who knows? You know, those back streets of uh, of Cerulean might be uh, you know, might be might be rough on the other side of the track. So Misty might have you know, she got some some street cred. Yeah. But uh, it's yeah, it's so, it's, um, it's it's cool because it's a totally different type of approach towards Pokemon training, and we we're, we're seeing this now as they go episode to episode. Like the differences in training style with you know AJ yeah. was completely different. Now this training style is completely different, and they're really getting cultured and you know figuring out more unique ways to train with Pokemon, whether they agree with them or not. Misty at this point is huddled over Starmie. Starmie's all broken down. And Giselle, Giselle says, look, look, we're in the pool. We're in your territory now. We're in water. You know, play a different Pokemon. Do you, if you want to play another water Pokemon? And Misty is so angry. She's like, why? Because so you could take out another one of my Pokemon. So, like, they're totally going back and forth. And Ash at this point steps in and says, you know, Giselle, it's not all about numbers. And then Giselle. Starts totally digging into Ash and Pikachu, like well, she's she's super cocky and she's you know she's flaunting the fact that she's at the top of her class, the beginner class, albeit, but you know she's really flaunting it. She's super cocky, and you know Ash, we're used to seeing this from Ash, you know, and like we've said in the previous episodes, and we're really rough on Ash for how cocky he is. This this takes it to a whole new level. Like, well, it's different because Ash's cockiness in the previous episodes were just him being like overzealous like thinking he's better than he is where this girl's cockiness is she's got facts and she just thinks that well, like smart, facts right? are oh, are number one over anything because she starts going at Misty with all of her facts and calculations when she beats Misty and then Ash steps in to try and defend his friend and then she just starts go- totally she starts laying ripping into Ash, and into Pikachu. Ash with Pokemon facts. Like, and that's her way of, like, playing you out. Like, if you don't know the facts, you're pretty much stupid. She and, really like, mocks him hard, though. Like, really, really calls him out and is just trying to embarrass him in front of everybody. Well, she does embarrass him in mm-hmm. front of everyone. She pretty much says that Pikachu is a baby Pokemon. And for, it's a good pet for little girls. And it's a good pet for little girls. And Pikachu's, girl. like, <laughs> eyes twitching. Like, he starts getting all fired yeah. up. I and can't it, believe she said that, actually. And, and it... It pretty much turns out that Ash and Pikachu demand a battle, and you know Giselle is ready, and she, you know, they, they knew it was coming, and Giselle plays Cubone now the, again, fighting type with with Electric. This is going to be a good showdown. Immediately, uh, Ash commands Pikachu to do a shock attack. Cubone spins his bone <laughs> and pretty much just deflects away the shock attack. It's you know baffling to. To Brock and to Ash, like, what the heck is going on? And, again, Giselle going into the fact of, you know, it's more about the trainer, you know, than the move even, you know, because he's so well trained, he can handle the electric attack. And then commands Cubone to use Leer. Now, I like this because, you know, in the video games with all these, you know, special ability or uh, stat moves, I never use them a lot. I never, you know, I'm... 
typically offensive when I play. I'll either do an you know an offensive move, or or but I never did anything that really played with stats. So they in the show they they use Lear and you know trying to confuse and throw off Pikachu. Ash commands Pikachu to kind of stare back with like a silly face, and, and their faces are great. They're making things. these ridiculous faces, and Ash and or Pikachu and Cubone are face to face. And Giselle just commands Cubone to use Bone Club, right? Yeah, and he and just clocks wha- Pikachu in the head. Yeah, he gets bombed right in the head. Poor Pika. All right, so the first time I saw this, I did a little flinch because this is the first act of like non just Pokemon special move or Pokemon attack. This is like straight, straight up, up violent. weapon violence, right? Yeah. So he gets bonked on the head and it's like, oh, snap. You know? <laughs> she just spit her coffee out. <laughs> She's, but, uh, you know, because it's it's pretty intense and poor Pikachu like falls to the ground and Ash is like, yo, what, what, like, this is crazy. Yeah. And so as Ash, this is happening, go ahead. No, Ash is like upset and he's, he starts calling Giselle like, yo, that's a cheap shot. That's a cheap shot. You can't throw a bone. And Giselle pretty much schools Ash once again and says, well, technically, you know, according to tournament ro- rules that this is an it's official. It's an approved move. It's an official move and I can use it. And then she. The, the, the bone meringue, you know, and completely like Cubone just lets this, you know, throw go and it knocks Pikachu clear off his feet parallel with the ground like. Yeah, right in the face, down. bam! You know, and Ash is like, whoa, you know, this is crazy because he's never seen this type of, you know, heavy-duty battling before. Pikachu is not knocked out, but barely, barely gets up to his feet. And the second he gets up on his feet, another bone meringue right to the face and completely gets knocked down again. And now Ash runs over to Pikachu. He's He's just, you know, out of sorts because... He's not used to Pikachu getting rocked by, you know, a weapon or, you know, something other than a Pokemon move directly. Yeah, he's just in shock, sort of. But he's not going to give up on this battle. So he turns and he grabs his Pikachu and he tells his Pika, you know what? Give it your all. Don't give up. I have faith in you. You know, just give it your all. And he just let lets Pika go. And Pika goes straight gangster he, he goes gangster he goes gangster yes. you see like this flurry of attacks from pikachu un you know now without any direction from ash which is really cool he just kind of ash just gives him a little you know motivation and this kind of plays to the the argument that Giselle was having in the beginning you know with ash about you know how this doesn't need to be calculated there's there's a a, a companionship element to this and you know, at one point, Ash had even said, like, I, I don't want to train Pikachu like this. You know, he's my friend. Yeah. You know, so he, he all he needed to do for Pikachu to get back on his feet and go after this Cubone was didn't have to give him attack commands. He just had to give, give him, him a little love and support. Give him a little, you know, a little love and support, yeah, a little TLC. He, yeah, he gave him a little, let's go, buddy, a little pep a talk. A little up and said, atoms. Yeah. And, but this this flurry of attack activity from from Pikachu is awesome. He bites yeah, Cubone first. first he, it, yeah, it happens real fast. First, he's like he you know bolts onto the scene. He grabs Cubone's tail, bites it. Cubone freaks out. Then he straight up like cat fight claws his back and just starts scratching his back oh you know what actually the first thing pikachu does is when he jumps on the screen he hits cubone in the head and his oh and spins the skull skull mask around spinning around and cubone's confused then he grabs the tail bites on the tail giselle's like oh yeah the scratch attack then he scratches him and then he ends it with a glorious flying karate it's like a straight up like he should have had the pikachu libre kick on there because like it's just absolutely flawless and cubone is done done ko'd knocked out giselle is baffled she calls back cubone she's like i can't believe yeah. this happened yeah like, well cubone, cubone's sitting there and like literally waterfalls are pouring out of his eyes he's all upset that he lost giselle's on her knees she's all sad that she lost well she even says like i cannot believe that this had happened and like, fought fought an electric happen? Pokemon and did not lose by the hand of electric moves. Like again, she's so calculated and formulaic. She's expecting the the electric type Pokemon to only use electric moves, 
and that kind of you know dictates how the battle will go um, with the type advantages and you know using scratch and bite and mm-hmm. you know kick these kick move you know it's not something that she could have ever expected in any way would would happen and then somebody i don't know what character says it but somebody winds up saying you know it was a fluke you know this was a once in a lifetime thing to see yeah, this yeah. but it's really not i don't know why they said that because you know well i think because, just because you don't ever see you don't normally, you, you don't see, normally see that that type of thing in battle and it, it, it's it's good because you know you, you see ash kind of kind of be redeemed with you know, him standing up for everyone throughout Mm -hmm. the whole episode, and he's like, finally, you know, Ash gets his due, he gets his credit, um, and, you know, wins the battle. Now, they cut back to Team Rocket, finally. What is going on with Team Rocket? They've been waiting in the wings the entire episode, just as Giselle is kind of like, you know, sulking about, yeah, Yeah. you know, the, the loss... All of a sudden, the, the the area just fills up with smoke. You know, you could tell Team Rocket is about to attack. Well, yeah, the, the the whole the whole area starts filling up with fog, and then you hear one of the characters. I probably, I think it's Ash going, "Oh no!" Right, because he he knows it's about to happen. Yeah, and you know, Team Rocket comes in full motto again. Nice animations this yes. week. Nice, nice animations this week. Really cool stuff. They go through the whole motto now. Before, when we talked about Team Rocket, they blasted off, you know, yeah. Meowth. So as they're going through the motto, Meowth falls from the sky, you know, from where they knocked him out just in time. He doesn't do it. That's right. He pulls in this other line. Um, but it's really funny because he dabs. He actually, he like, does, dab he does like a dab move. pose at the end, which is really, really funny. Uh, our eight-year-old is addicted to dabbing, as is everyone in the school. Um and it, it's it was just really really funny. It was hilarious. But as you know, Team Rocket is there. You know, Giselle steps up and she's like, "Oh, I know Team Rocket. You guys, you know, have the worst scores in the history of the school. You know, what do you say? Your team versus our team." And she's got the five other students there, uh, actually plus Joe. Joe, you yeah. know what I mean? But she's like, you know, how how about it? And Team Rocket immediately is like, "Oh regretting my god!" Their, regretting yeah. even coming there. And Giselle goes on the offensive with, you know, all the whole squad from Pokemon Tech, and they just, you know, unleash Pokeballs yeah, at well, Team Rocket. Yeah, and this is the weirdest thing. This is, Well, this is good, because um, Giselle's like, you know, come on, let's, let's get them. And Team Rocket goes, wait a second, that's not by the rules. And Giselle winds up saying, well, you're bad guys, you don't play by the rules. And Team Rocket gets pelted with six Pokeballs. No Pokemon deploy out of the Pokeballs. They could have been empty, but they just full speed peg Team Rocket with six Pokeballs, which is clearly enough to make uh, Team Rocket run away in fear. Yeah, regret being there. They run away, getting hit with the Pokeballs, saying, I guess we're blasting off again. And that's it. They went out like total punks. Total, total punks. Total punks. They didn't even battle. They didn't even bring out any yeah, Pokemon. No, no, yeah, no Pokemon at all. They didn't even try. They didn't even attempt to try and capture a Pokemon. But whatever. They didn't even have a plan. Yeah, well, that's probably why they got, you know, they got schooled yeah. with, with empty Pokeballs, which was yeah. ironic. But it was very, very bizarre. So yeah, pretty much. That, yeah, they, they, they go out like punks. Now, they cut to this really nice looking serene scene of Giselle sitting, you know, on the edge of a, you know, on the waterfront, and Joe is there. Yeah, and Giselle is reflecting on her experience um, during these battles. Right, so they, they're talking about the whole thing, and Joe, you know, opens up a little bit, and he's like, you know, is it okay if I still keep your picture on me? Yeah, well, he explain, he winds up explaining to Giselle that he's going to leave school, and he's going to go back home, and after seeing Ash... And Ash's relationship with Pikachu and seeing that it's not all about textbooks and stats. Right, right. He's going to go home and, and reconnect with his first Pokemon and train in a different way. And Giselle pretty much says, well, you know, maybe one day I'll see you in Pokemon Battle. And, right, in the Pokemon League, and right. In the Pokemon League and, you know, hopefully I'll be a worthy appointment. Now at this point... Joe winds up saying, you know, since I'm leaving, is it okay if I keep your picture? Right. Now, I love this part because Giselle straight up friend zones Joe. 
And she's like, well, hey, I'll keep a picture of you, too. And he's like, you will? He goes, yeah, I keep pictures of all my friends. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Cut. Yeah. Cut. Yeah. Friend zoned. Yeah. Friend zoned. Absolutely, uh, absolutely uh, hilarious. Yeah. So they cut back about 20 feet away. And Ash and Misty are watching this thing go down. And Ash looks at Misty and goes, hey, you know, how come we can't be like that? And my girl Misty straight up turns and was like, because he doesn't owe her a bike. Right, so and it, so it comes full circle. Yes, it's so... It, yeah, so it ends on a really cute note. It, now, again, I hope this wasn't like a blabbermouth episode because we were kind of all over the place and it was a very hard episode to talk about because it's all kind of... They're, they get across a lot of plot and story elements without a lot, not a lot happening in the a- actual episode. So it yeah, was really tough to talk about. So I hope it wasn't too scatterbrained. It felt scatterbrained. Yeah, this yeah, it was really weird to talk about because there was so much personality things going on in this episode that it yes. wasn't like, you know. But it was cool. The animation was definitely different. Um, it definitely felt different. Uh, but you know, again, fleshing out the you know how they're they're seeing stuff that they would never see in their normal lives. They're out on the road, you know, and they're still not at Vermilion City, and they're just seeing getting all these experiences along the way. So it, it was very cool. I like how it started and stopped, kind of with the whole theme of the bike. They're having that thing recurring. Um, I don't know. Cool episode. Yeah. Cool oh. episode. Definitely different. Um, I think the only thing that's going to make me feel better is getting an EX out of this booster. Ooh. All right, these are the probably the last two generations boosters we'll open. Okay. Um, this is going to be from the Genesect Mythical Collection. This Genesect card is awesome. Now, I like Genesect because uh, it's kind of, you know, with non-organic Pokemon or, you know, mechanical or metal Pokemon, they just look awesome. And this card looks wicked. It, it just has like a real... Robotech kind of look to them, you See, know. I, I'm partial to these type of Pokemon because they don't look like Pokemon to me. Well, you have to expand they to just, know that they, it could be not. It doesn't have to be organic, especially I with no. You know. But I don't know. But the card is really cool. Um, it I'll, is a cool looking card. I'll get some photos of it up. Uh, it's it is you know a basic Pokemon, 110 hit points, linear attack, and Destructor Beam. Destructor Beam is cool. Uh, flip a coin if uh, heads discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon and 90 damage. This is promo card XY119. Very cool looking card. I'm going first in this booster. I have Pikachu pack art. I'm going to get a good one. You have Venusaur pack art. All right, so let's let, let's do this. I'm, I gotta I gotta I need I need. So I'm just gonna pull my cards out and. All right. Uh... All right, here we go. Here we go. Wait, we do three from the top or three from the bottom? Three from the top every time. I know. Leave me alone. All right. Shroomish. Don't judge me. Trainer, red card. Trainer, crushing hammer. Rhyhorn. Ponita. Magikarp. Grass energy. My reverse is a cloister. Cloister. (gasps) My radiant is a hollow Charizard. I like this card, again, with the trainer. And my rare is a pincer, non hollow. Okay. Yeah, but you got a Charizard. I got a Charizard. I got a Charizard. I'm very happy. All and right. that, that means there could be good things happening for All you right, right here now. Here we go. Ready? Go. I'm rubbing it. My first card is a Raichu. Oh my God. What happened? I got a glimpse she of the back. She got a glimpse. <laughs> I got a glimpse of the back. I love when that oh happens. My God. All right. Okay. She's excited. All right. So I got a Raichu, Trainer Olympia, Trainer Max Revive, Basic Zubat. An energy, the steel energy, a magmar. I'm sorry, I'm excited. A Paris. Okay, this is my reverse. this is my reverse Machamp, and then I got Ooh, a radiant Pikachu. The it's full art so Pikachu. Cute. And, and then I got a Vaporeon. Yeah. Oh, bam, bam, bam. All right, four episode streak is broken of no EXs. So yeah, I'm show, I'm showing my card to the microphone like you guys can see it. <laughs> uh, here you go, guys. Look, it's a big. Oh, I'm so happy. Yay. I'm so happy for you. All right, cool. And so, it's so funny because this is um, Josh is every time he evolves an Eevee wants a vape porn yes. lately. Yeah, in Pokemon Go, my son has been plagued with like 500 Jolteons in a row, and I don't have this card. Nice. Yeah. So well, there you go. There we go. Awesome. Yay. I'm so happy. I'm excited. Too. All right, everyone. I'm, this is this episode's gone a little bit long. I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, uh, other than that, check us out at gotta watch them all.com. You can find us on Twitter at gotta watch them all. 
Email us, gotta watch them all podcast at gmail.com. You can find me at Proud Gamer Tweet on the Twitter. Uh, thank you, Chipper Crit, for the music. Thank you, Seth Hay, for the graphics. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Yeah. yeah. She got a yak. She's all giddy. Yeah, I can't stop looking. I just keep waving them back and forth and looking at their shininess. Ah. <laughs> all right, y'all. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Peace. Bye.